Melusine and the Royal Dragon Lineage Welcome back to another episode of Wild Feminine Magic. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Let's get into the video. Melusine's ancient story comes from at least five different cultures, each adding shape to her myth throughout the ages. From her ancient mother dragon symbolism in Sumerian times and Celtic goddess of sovereignty to Gnostic Christianity and the Middle Ages, she continues to fascinate and enthrall us with her mystery. Melusine is the European mother goddess of water. She inhabits the locals of sweet water wells and springs. Alternatively, she is called a mermaid or the dragon princess and legends say she is half human and half dragon slash fish slash snake. The lineage of Merovingian kings claimed her as progenitress who gave them their right to rule. Both Priscina and her daughter Melusine in their turns served as fountains or grail maidens, until they were in their marriageable prime, as dragon queens. In the Arthurian and Magdalene traditions of the Ladies of the Lake, Melusine was a fountain fay, an enchantress of the underwood. Her fountain at Verrières in Forest was called Lucina, meaning light bringer, from which derived the name of the royal house of Lusignan, the crusader kings of Jerusalem. The fount of Melusine was said to be located deep within a thicket wood in Anjou. She was also known as Melusina, Melusiana de Scythes, Melusanu, and the Dragon Princess. Melusine's ancient past and the royal house of Lusignan. The Merovingian kings and their mythos, is related to the narrative of Melusine, and specifically, in her non-fictional incarnation as Melisanda, the mother of Falk V, Count of Anjou and daughter of Baldwin II. In this context, Melusine's bloodline is attributed with uniting the Merovingian house with the line of Anjou, and thus to the Plantagenets who would produce several English monarchs. Both stories share an identical theme, of legendary sea creatures giving rise to powerful bloodlines. Regarding the legendary line of Frankish kings known as the Merovingians, it will be recalled that the mother of their founder Merovi, or Merovius, was believed to have been raped by the Quinator, a mythical sea bull. An even earlier rendition of the Quinator slash Melusine legend is the ancient Phoenician tale of Europa and the bull. Here again, a sea bull ravages a maiden of high birth. Europa is the daughter of Canaan, the son of Poseidon. We should also note that the goddess, or princess, Europa is the source of the name of continental Europe, and that the image of Europa and the bull. Here we see the connection between Meslucin and Ariadne and Dionysus as well as Persephone and Hades. In history, there is abundant evidence of a Sumerian Melusine and a Celtic Melusine. In early Christian churches she is often in the company of a male partner, who is depicted either as a bull, a fish or a green man. Together they stand for the sacred couple that symbolizes the marriage between heaven and earth. And in Sumer, Kings enacted a ritual visitation with a goddess depicted as a serpent or half-fish. This sacred marriage also conferred legitimacy on their reign. The threat of destruction to the kingdom loomed over the king, should he fail in his duty. Through the sacred marriage rite in Sumerian culture kings established their legitimacy by taking the place of Demuzi in the temple for one night on the tenth day of the New Year festival. Inanna's high priestesses took her role as the sacred lover to Demuzi. As emissaries of the serpent cult, these women formed their own alliances with powerful men and established lines of descent. Her priestesses who originated within Sumerian society and their direct descendants up until the Merovingian dynasty during the Dark Ages, sometimes even referred to as the Dragon Court. The Etruscans also had roots in ancient Hermetic wisdom cultures from the Middle East and transported them to Europe. Sometimes Melusine is compared with the Gnostic Sophia, which also confirms her roots in the Hermetic tradition. We see that Melusine is steeped in mythology and folklore in Europe, from France to Brittany and Celtic lore. Her legend became widespread throughout the Celtic countries including Ireland, Wales, Brittany, Galicia, and England. Once it was translated from Old Irish, the story spread. Melusine myths are especially connected with the northern, most Celtic areas of Gaul and the Low Countries. Sir Walter Scott told a Melusine tale in Minstrelsy of the Scottish Border, 1802-1803, confident that the reader will find the Fairy of Normandy, or Britannia, adorned with all the splendor of Eastern description. Melusine is one of the pre-Christian era water fairies who were sometimes responsible for changelings. 
the lady of the lake, who spirited away the infant Lancelot and raised the child, was such a water nymph. For other European water sprites dangerous to humans, especially men, see Lorelei, Nixie. Credit Celtopedia. Melusine represents the serpentine fairies of the matriarchal age. The mother of Melusine is called Prasine. This prohibits the father from seeing his children breastfeed. This means that the father does not live in the family of the mother and does not share his family privacy. But why? Firstly, women keep their religions. And Saturday is a holy day devoted to the goddess snake ablutions, secret rites reserved for women, specifically high priestesses. The men are not allowed, which is symbolized by the ban on the husband to see his wife on Saturday because it is the day of worship of the serpent. Melusine is a high priestess, and the fact that she married a man is not only harmful to the privacy of the matriarchal family, but this excursion takes an even more dangerous turn as man tries to include not only matriarchal family home, but also in the priesthood and the cult of the snake, originally reserved only for women and elected and initiated. In ancient times, springs, wells and rivers were of a sacred character. Caves near the Seine were filled with statues of devotions to the Saquena nymph, now at the Archaeological Museum of Dijon. Sources were considered miraculous healing. Melusine as a serpentine fairy of the matriarchal age snake is a powerful symbol of healing and she symbolizes the energies of Mother Earth as it was honored in ancient Greece. The god of medicine, Asclepius, Aesculapius, was the serpent attribute and in temples dedicated to him, the oracle was delivered through snakes or his winged snake Caduceus. According to the book, The Serpent and the Swan, the animal bride in folklore and literature, the author provides a history and analysis of animal bride tales from antiquity to the present. The animal bride tale, the author argues, is an enduring expression of humankind's need to remain close to and a part of nature. While the animal bride theme has origins in the serpent cults of Mesopotamia and southeastern Europe, as an expression of their myths and beliefs surrounding animals and women, through time, the animal bride theme changed as a result of mankind's changing perceptions of the natural world. Melsween's legend manifested as history, her magical power affected key places and events in the development of the medieval world and shaped the modern world through Jerusalem and the Middle East. She is considered a messenger of ancient alchemical cultures, who believed in the long journey of the soul, in this life and the hereafter and beyond. Melusine's story is a powerful initiatory legend emerging from the fairy tradition of ancient Europe gently reminding us, there has always been a Melusine tracing back to ancient times and sacred magical lineages. That brings us to the end of today's video all about Melusine and the royal dragon lineage. If you enjoyed this episode, Remember to leave a thumbs up and to subscribe to Wild Feminine Magic for even more fascinating content, just like this. As always, thanks for watching. See you again soon in the next one.